Yay. All right, so I'll try to start off like asking a little bit of the questions and then we'll kind of, we'll kind of swap. And then, um, then I have the questions in front of me, so. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, all right. Uh, what's going on, guys? I have uh, Jessica Gavilanis from Better Homes and Gardens. Uh, just a very, very good friend of mine. We actually went to college together almost 12 years ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, long time ago. So uh, Jess uh, recently joined the industry. I believe it's a little over a year, two years ago uh, with an awesome agency, Better Homes and Gardens. I believe the Rand Realty um, portion or group. Um, Jess, if you want to introduce yourself, um, give everybody kind of feedback of what you do and kind of some of the things you've been making adjusting with the coronavirus. Okay, so as you said, yeah, um, I'm with Rand Realty from our Fort Lee office in Jersey. Um, and lately I've been more of a buyer's agent than anything. So um, working a lot with buyers and trying to keep them on top of the market, trying to adjust how to get into showings for those sellers that are allowing it or trying to at least come to some type of compromise. Um, uh, a little bit about, I mean, everybody's talking about the virtual showings, right? And everybody's like, you know, that's one way of a solution to that physical problem of not being able to go see it. But my buyers specifically, um, are not totally comfortable with, you know, purchasing a house with only seeing it virtually. So one way that we've been just going into these showings, I think it's only been, you know, the past two weekends that we've been huh. like really going to the, the houses and narrowing down their searches. So when we go, you know, obviously everybody has their mask, everybody has their gloves. We have sanitizer with us. Um, we have our wipes with us and uh, pretty much, you know, you just don't touch anything when you go inside. Um, our agency actually set up a list of protocols way back like in March, like early, like when this all started. Nice. And they gave us like a good, really detailed list of like what we should recommend our buyers in order to go to showings once they're ready to go. So, you know, up in beginning of March or the, what was it? Mid-March or around there, people were super nervous about it all. Um, so sending out that out to, you know, all our clients, all of our leads was kind of a way to try to help them understand that it's, it's going to be okay. Like, there are going to be ways to go about things, um, especially when they deemed us as realtors essential. So um, that's pretty much it as far as, you know, the, the, the safety precautions that we're taking as far as going to showings. Other than that, it's just pretty much, you know, it's, if I have like a, a, a lead, a buyer lead who's interested in trying to get into business and has questions about like, is it a good time right now? I always say, you know, yeah, if you're thinking about it, at least right now, take the time to prepare and get, you know, knowledge and informed about everything that's going on, about the market, about whatever you can get details about. And so I send them the packet that I would uh, take to an initial meeting and I send it mm -hmm. the whole thing into the, uh, in an email. And then, yeah. And so, and then we just talk about it and then go that way with, so basically what I always do from the beginning was I would set up a meeting with a lead and then I would take the packet with me, you know, and go and talk to them about it. it. Um, now it's just a matter of like, I, I email it to them. We talk about it through video chat or whatever. And, and then we go from there and see if they want to actually follow through with us and, and work with us. Awesome. So what, what have you noticed a little bit differently um, uh, from when you first, first started, as opposed to kind of now, um, really th from, from the, um, from your personal perspective, right? What, what are some of the adjustments that you've made, um, in order to, to kind of adjust during these times? Um, well, what definitely has changed is that I am way more on my computer than I was before, um, as far as video goes, right? So, that's one thing because before I was more on my phone and calling than it was having video chats with 
consultations. So that's one thing. Personally, for me, as far as like aside from real estate, you mean, or just in time? Yeah, like well, a little bit of everything, right? Okay. Uh, what are what are some of the um, some of the adjustments you've recently noticed um, has has kind of uh, has kind of transpired out of this? You know, one thing that I am starting to really start personally is scheduling in my time to get my actual workouts in, or like my yoga, which is something nice. that I kept putting off because I felt like it was more important for me to go into the office or it was more important to me to do something about work. But this nowadays, like, it's like, okay, no, I'm home a lot and I need that release of, of just some sweat. Like I need to add that sweat in. So yeah. I've been scheduling it and then I've been like, actually do it. Like I worked out, I got my one hour workout yet yesterday, which felt really, really good. So. Yeah, I know. Well, if everybody knows, Jess was a stud soccer player too. <laughs> played uh, played during the time when I was there. So awesome. Um, now let me ask you another question. Have you noticed a little bit of a lesser demand from the buyers for el I should say for eligible buyers, right? For the ones that are kind of deemed essentials and so on and so forth. Have you seen a lesser demand from them or um, is it still kind of the same? I think for me, it's been the same. Um, I'm still getting leads. We have our zap router that we use and leads still come in as much as they came in before. Um, so I think, I don't know if it's, you know, a basis of people just having just basic interest in the market, but, um, I, I mean, I even had a conversation yesterday with the lead who he was nervous about his, uh, you know, his income tax, but like he wanted to go out and start looking like he wants to purchase. So yeah. the demand is there from buyers. Uh, sellers, I see I, I see houses coming on the market. I think there's other sure. agents who are putting in the effort to ease the nervousness of other people who were either considering it before or um, I don't know, went into withdrawal, but then came back on the market. So, yeah. Yeah, I definitely, so I think the statistics last, uh, last week off the, off the NJMLS was there was over 400 houses, 420 houses I had posted um, that were on the market, about 208 new under contract. And then obviously a little bit, a little bit of, um, of deals going through and stuff. So, yeah. so there's definitely that. Now, normally there's this perception, right? Around this time from April to, I would say uh, <clears throat> August, September, really the real estate industry is a little different now. It's always busy, at least, you know, I know we can both say that, um, where it's kind of always a seller's market, right? right. Where the seller kind of dictates the price. Is that kind of still the case right now? I don't think so. I think the sellers, you know, have less of a say in what, obviously, because everybody's income has been Correct. somewhat exactly. touched upon, right? Impacted. So it has, I think it's more of the buyer's market than, than anything right now. Yeah, I can definitely agree. That, so one of the reasons why I was asking that is because um, personally for my company, March and April was our best month in the history of the company. And we've been around for 20 years since 2001. Um, we just closed this month over a billion dollars, um, which, which um, for a company, we've got 2,100 employees. So we're not small. We're a direct lender with, with all the big dogs, with Fannie, Freddie, and Ginny. Um, but I was honestly very shocked. And we had a great, great month as a branch. Um, to, and then I see, unfortunately, some, uh, I, I despise the TV, the media. I think it's, uh, you know, it's got its cons and it's got its pros kind of beefs up a lot of things and creates tension, but that's the media for you. Um, I, I know, like we said, you're kind of newer in the industry, but I'm sure um, Better Grand has kind of given you an input. Have you noticed any change or what have you heard kind of differences with what, with the 2008 recession, right? The housing market crash recession into now. Um, and I'll kind of give my personal input into that too. But what have you kind of heard from them or from your experience? Um, that's different than this this uh, this pandemic we're going through. Um, pretty much what I've learned is that obviously the 08 was caused by the real estate and this is not. Exactly. So this yeah. is more of our reaction to the circumstances of the what the virus is doing to people, but not necessarily because of real estate, right? So it's okay. it's um, and then the other thing I think is it's more it's m most likely going to be way more short term. 
than what the 08 lasted. Uh, Love and, it. Uh, yeah, of course. I mean. Awesome. So yeah, so the, like you said, so I know from my experience, from my understanding, um, especially when I teach to the students, um, is the 2008 crisis was the a financial crisis, right? Mainly because of the housing market. Right. Uh, a lot of bad loans. It was the era where if you had a heartbeat, you got a loan, right? And uh, so it, it's it was true. Nowadays, it's even hard to to approve a client, and I'm sure you probably go through it all the time. With clients who put an offer and everything, and then you know you deal with a lender who's incompetent or whatever it is, or doesn't do their due diligence from the start, and it falls through. Um, and I think I was reading the other day out of the five recessions we've had in the history, three of them the housing market actually went up. Uh, mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting to say. So definitely, whoever whoever is is watching or sees the video after, something to clearly clearly keep in mind. This is an outside force, like Jen said, right? Uh, we just, we don't have control over this, right, Jess? It's, right. It, it came, nothing we can do. Um, I definitely think the 2008 market, uh, the 2008 recession kind of sort of prepped us. We were, um, the Federal Reserve made the two cuts on the rates, uh, in my opinion, a little prematurely, but it, but it was done where it cut the Federal Reserve to zero doesn't really impact too much of the personal buyer's rates, right? The Federal Reserve is different than the homeowner's rate, but it did cut interest rates now where they're the lowest they've been in, in a very, very long time. Um, have you personally, I've seen some adjustments from realtors. Uh, I know you and I have spoken before with virtual showings. There's also something now that's coming up called like a 3D, uh, I don't know if it's a showing or walkthrough or 3D walkthrough. Yeah. Uh, have you, have you kind of worked on any of your listings or seen any of that more into, into right now? Um, I have, I personally haven't played with it yet. Um, I do know a lot of the agents from my agency. We have, you know, offices all over through North Jersey and New York. So a lot mm -hmm. of them have been doing that already. Um, 3D walkthroughs, Matterport or whatever programs they're using. Um, and so I haven't seen it on any of the listings that I have tried to send to my buyers, right? Got it. So, I mean, the only thing with virtual tours, if you're, I, what I'm just, you know, my opinion is if you're going to do a virtual tour, either have two of them set up, especially for right now, because exactly. like my buyers, the reason they want to go to the house physically is to see all the downsides or you know what they need to actually want to make a decision on. So that's pretty much. I mean, you. I this morning we had a little tidbit from one of our uh, CEOs, or he was saying like, you know, have one virtual tour where yeah, you depict all the niceness of the house, and then the other one is where you send it directly to people who are serious about the property, and send it to them about everything else that's not in the pictures obviously now just to clarify too you guys are able to take clients to homes right yes we're allowed to do showings as long as it's no more than three people so it's just me and the couple or mom and daughter or whoever it is um and, and that's fairly new right i think that i mean was, yeah obviously I mean, before it was like at least i mean yeah if it was like a family that was looking they would have their kids around and they mm -hmm. would be going was it you know that would be normal however now it's three people and it's all adults pretty much you know you don't want to take anyone younger i think in the beginning the beginning of month in april you guys weren't allowed to go at all right and then right uh, so but that i don't think that lasted very long i think you know, for jersey at least i know new york is still way more stricter than jersey crazy yeah so yeah so our agents in jersey i mean new york are not really going out and doing showings at all sure um so they are really tagging into the virtual stuff. Um, nice. But in Jersey, yeah, it, I think it only lasted um, about two weeks, maybe. Right. I'm not positively sure, but I know NAR fought for us and, and they were like, yeah, we need our realtors to go out and do some yeah. showing. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Great, great, great stuff. Um, what, what else, what do you kind of see some of, um, some of the things transpiring out of this? Do you, do you see housing crisis kind of diminishing, staying the same? Um, should somebody who's interested in a home um, start looking or there's always the cliche of should I wait to buy, right? Uh, what's, what's, what's kind of your input on that? I think, and you know, I said this 
in the beginning of uh, of all of this, it's if you're uncomfortable, it obviously all settles in your comfort level. Um, if you're comfortable with going out and being in a property, using the mask, using the gloves, using the sanitizer, washing your hands when you get inside your house, yeah, and, and all that stuff then yeah, you should use this time, at, if anything, to prepare and get informed. Um, and you really reach out to a realtor that you're comfortable with and take this time to really interview people that you want as part of your team to make sure that your transaction goes a lot quicker than say the three months that everybody's giving the leeway for. Got it, awesome. Um, yeah, it was kind of something I mentioned earlier because I've seen it personally, um, there's definitely this quote unquote less competition right now, right? Um, right. People, people who are furloughed from, from at least lending guidelines may be different with other lendings, but I highly doubt it. If you're furloughed, you can't get a mortgage. Right. Um, so if you are working and there's been no change of income or if there has been and you can still qualify, uh, chances are, and correct me if I'm mistaken, Jess, you probably have a higher likelihood of getting your offer accepted Mm -hmm. Like what we said earlier, when it was a seller's market now, and I'm sure last year it was probably insane, you know, for you, same thing with us with taking in a million applications. Um, I think, I think, you know, if somebody has a capacity and I had done a video, but he knows me in social media, I'm crazy on it. But the three things, right, is um, if you've got the down payment and it's not going to affect your lifestyle, um, if you're planning on staying the home permanently, and then third and most importantly is if you don't think your job is going anywhere, then right now is absolutely a great, great time because you're not fighting. And right. just how many times have you put an offer for a house at full asking and yeah. uh, got turned down? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> and one of the biggest reasons would be why? Well, they're waiting for a bigger offer over asking, right? And then or they because, got one. Right. Or they already have one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've seen I've seen some listings, I, no joke, go twenty, thirty thousand yes. dollars more. And I mean, fingers crossed that it appraises, but right. exactly. uh, say, uh, would you agree that right now if you put in an offer, I mean again, depending on how long the house been on the market, yeah, yeah, I expect so on and so forth. But you're probably uh, competing against lesser people. For sure. I, and the other thing is, you know, appraisals, as for what I'm concerned, are going either at asking or less. Um, mm -hmm. So you're probably very safe at going at asking right now. And so that yeah. that helps a lot to know that. Well, I know there, there are some adjustments too, right? So from the appraiser's perspective, there's, th I'm sure you guys have had it. Um, there's stuff called drive-by appraisals, yeah. where what they're doing is they're actually doing an exterior um, inspection of the property. And mainly if it's, if the tenant doesn't let you in or the landlord is not letting you in, we actually will now go to a different appraiser. We try it twice with the second appraiser. And if the first appraiser doesn't work, if the second does, and they then still are not letting them go in, mm -hmm. then we will approve a drive-by appraisal. And I think that's a general thing that was approved with Fannie. Um, where, what do you think from your opinion is the segment um, that actually may benefit from the coronavirus? Tough. Reword your question. <laughs> so what segment you think? So, um, you know, the, the housing market from my experience, um, usually after a quote unquote little crisis like this, um, mm -hmm. how do you think the housing, let's, let me reword it. How do you think the housing market is gonna do after this? There's gonna be changes, obviously. And I think the changes that you're seeing for right now a lot of them are going to stick as far as like ritual open houses go. They might become a thing and they might be, you know, the day, you know, the open houses, you're like usually Sunday, Saturdays and Sundays are out in the weekends, right? Correct. The builders are working for like four hours at least to do the virtual, to do the open houses. Now, virtual open houses could probably be like midday on a, on a Friday or midday on a Wednesday. So it, those types of ideas and implementations are going to help i think just overall help people relax a little bit sure. right i mean you have either from a buyer's and a seller's perspective you know your house is going to be exposed you to a lot more people than than probably just 
the MLS. So yeah. I think those those are good. I think the open houses and the showings are going to be different. The way yeah. we do that. Awesome. I think the 3D thing to bring that up because I think that's been the biggest difference. I never used to see them on Zillow, Redfin, Realtor.com. Now I see them on every listing. I think I was reading um, Zillow increased 408%, which is a 400% increase of listings now using them as opposed to not using them before. I think Realtor.com mm -hmm. 500. Um, do you find the housing market um, booming after this so people are at home right now right with their fingers you know with their fingers crossed whatever they can't work or if they are working they're a little hesitant do you right. think the housing market's going to skyrocket hopefully things open up may 15th may 31st or whatever route we go mm -hmm. how do you think the housing market's going to bounce back <clears throat> i think i think it might not be it might not skyrocket too quickly because i think people are still going to be nervous about this after may and and even after june um like I was just saying the other day, my birthday is in July, but I don't think I'm going to be doing, you know, a full on party or crazy, a vacation yeah. somewhere. Um, so like even through, I think just towards the end of the, of the year, I think people are going to be a little bit, definitely way more open and that, that's where it's going to pick up. Like, yeah, phase four is where it's going to, it's going to really increase. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, I can definitely say on our end from the lending perspective, um, interest rates are low. Um, they're the one of the, I mean, I was locking some at in the twos, um, wow. a, lot of, a lot of them in the threes. Yeah. 15, some, some, some 30, um, in the low threes, um, helped a lot of clients that could not qualify before because right. of the higher interest rate now that it's lower from my understanding, you know, but who knows, but interest rates are supposed to stay more or less fixed until 2021. I think that should definitely help a lot of buyers incentivize them to take advantage. Uh, there's clearly been a huge refi boom too um, for people doing a lot of refinances. Uh, so those who are homeowners take advantage of refis. And then also if you are a homeowner, housing prices are more or less staying fixed. So you would contact someone like Jess and list your home with them. They obviously got the tools and Better Homes is an awesome, awesome company. Uh, you know, they keep up with a lot of the big ones. So, so one of the biggest things too, is that they're giving us, like she said, virtual showings, um, the 3D walkthroughs, they clearly care in regards to, uh, they're having these meetings and you said you met up with the CEO, you know, yeah. um, and having these individual meetings and team meetings and stuff like that, clearly making the adjustments. Um, so great, great stuff, Jess. Um, I, I, I greatly appreciate you coming on. Um, always, always a pleasure, you know, Thank you. Um, and I, I appreciate you giving your insight, some of the adjustments. Uh, kudos, kudos to you for for going out there, especially, you know, I'm I'm lucky I'm cooped up in my office. We're opening up a new office actually in June. So that's going to be uh, awesome, awesome stuff. Um, but really? still, still kind of sitting uh, in Woodbridge still. Oh, OK, um, about th about two, two to three blocks from where we're at right now. We'll kind oh, okay. of announce it soon. Um, but it's going to be great, you know, um, but, you know, like I was saying, I'm cooped up behind an office. Yeah, we're out on the road and and I do a lot of seminars, webinars, you know, like we're doing now. Uh, but kudos to you guys, all, all you realtors out there who, who put who put your, you know, your health and risk at first for the benefit of the clients. Uh, I thank you guys for that. I appreciate all the work that you guys put in and uh, look forward to um, to making the American dream possible for everybody. Thank right. you. Thank you for having Thanks. me. Thanks again. Absolutely. I will. Have a good one. You too.